Hi folks, I'm Mike. And I hope you will. Many of you have been asking me recently about how to export projects from Cakewalk for use in another door. Now this is something I've done quite a lot over the last few years and I've developed my own routine, which is not that pretty, but is pretty effective in terms of maintaining complete control over the project. Now this is not really for you if you simply want to export stems or multi-tracks to send to someone else for remixing your project, although I will be covering that methodology in this video. Also, you don't really need to use this method just for using the up and coming versions of Cakewalk, Cakewalk Sona especially, because that will be able to read the current Current file formats. Now before we dive in, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, DistroKid. If you follow the VIP link in the description down below, you'll get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music. Now before we dive in, I just want to take a quick look at a method you may have considered which I have found to be not that useful. Now if you look in the export menu of Cakewalk, you'll see a file format called OMF, which you may have considered because it is kind of designed to transfer project data from one door to another. Now it's reasonably useful in the sense that it does maintain what I'll call clip integrity. So if you've got a, you know, a clip which appears you know, two minutes into your song, lasts for 30 seconds, it will appear in the same way when we import this into another door if we use OMF. But it's severely limited in so many other ways that I don't use it, to be honest with you. Um, first of all, it doesn't transfer MIDI data. It doesn't transfer tempo changes. It doesn't have things like markers, etc. included. And we're going to be covering how to do that in today's video with the methodology I'm showing. It also relies upon the other door having the ability to actually import OMF files, which not all of them do anyway. So that's why I'm not using OMF files in today's video, but do feel free to experiment with them if you wish. Preparation is key, and if you follow these next few tips, it's gonna make life a whole lot easier for you later on in this process. Before we do anything though, I want you to make sure that you save your project to a completely new file name. We're gonna be messing with the project a little bit as we extract the things we need, and I don't want you to mess up the format of your current project, so please do make sure you do that. The next thing I want you to make sure you do is have good, meaningful names for all of, all of your tracks. You can see down here with mine that we can pretty easily identify which track is which, okay? Now, this is much more than just a nicety. When we actually import this project into another door later on, you're going to be able to see these names of the tracks clearly. It's going to help you to identify which track is which. The other thing you may like to do is if you're using uh, markers, is make sure that they're sort of clear and have meaningful marker names, because we will be um, importing markers into the other doors as well. And then finally, and this is a bit outside of what we actually do in Cakewalk, but I do make sure that I've got a few important screenshots, okay, of my current Cakewalk project. I'm primarily focused on the console view. So I'll go down to my console view. I'm gonna double click on the tab here just to make it full screen. And then I would take screenshots and make sure that I scroll across and capture all of the tracks first of all. And then if I've got lots of buses, which I do here, I'll make sure I can see all of those and get screenshots of those as well. What I'm trying to capture is um, things like my fader values, um, pan values, I'm trying to capture which plugins I've used, and some of the routing as well. So we can't really import or export and import those things into another door. So a screenshot is a wonderful record of what we had happening um, in Cakewalk. Now, even if your project doesn't include any MIDI data as such, it's still useful to do a MIDI export because we are going to be able to export tempo changes and markers and things like that. So that can give you a nice structure to your new project. So we're going to start off by making sure that we've selected all tracks before we export. So I like to make sure I click on something up in the track 
track view up here, a track or what have you. Then I press Control A to make sure that all tracks are selected. Um, and this is going to include some which are not MIDI data. It could be, you know, sort of audio data, etc. That's fine. The export process is just going to ignore those particular tracks. Then I go up to File and then go down to Export and then click on Standard MIDI File. Okay. Now that opens up this dialog. I'm going to select a folder. I've created a folder especially for exporting all of the things I'm going to export in this process so you can see that here it's called export so I'm going in there and I want to make sure that my uh, file type or save as type down here is MIDI format 1. Now there is also MIDI format 0 as an option if you really want to just make sure you've got both versions just in case you could save with that version as well format 0 but it doesn't really include everything that we need. So I go for MIDI format one, okay? And I'll just click on save and that's done. Now, if we hop over to Studio One as an example at the moment, I'll go over there and import that file into Studio One, like so. I'll just zoom so that I can see everything. Then we can see our MIDI data is there. But if we go up to the top here in Studio One, I'm just going to show markers and show tempo. Then you can see the markers are there from Cakewalk. Um, the tempo is set at the beginning and there's these tempo changes at the end, which are also included. So it's a pretty useful process to do at this stage. So I like to export the audio as raw as possible because I'm going to apply the mix and the effects and the panning, etc., to that audio in the new door. I don't want that to be done here and I don't want to export the results of that. You have to be careful when you do export individual tracks. Um, if you're not careful, they can be affected by fader positions, by panning, by effects, etc. I don't want that. So I want to reset a few things here, okay? So I'm going to start off, um, I like to see my console view nice and clearly. So I'm just going to double click on the console tab at the bottom just to bring it up to a kind of a full screen view. And then I'm going to be using something called the mix recall feature or module. So if you can't see that, uh, right click on the top bar up here, go to modules and then go to mix recall. Okay, that brings up that module. Then if we go to the drop down menu here for it, I like to just go down to mix recall settings. And I just want to make sure that um, both controls and automation are checked. Okay, so I want to recall those things. I'll click on OK. Then I'll go back up to the mix recall menu and then go to reset mix. Okay. I'll click on that and it's going to warn me that this is an, this is an undoable uh, action, which is why I asked you to make sure you saved your file to a new file earlier because this is destructive, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do it, click on yes, and that has reset all of the faders to zero, okay? And also it's reset all the panning controls, okay? This is just one way you can do this. I know you can use the um, select all method and using control, but I just prefer this. Just make sure I capture everything here. Unfortunately though, it doesn't include um, the gain settings and I do wanna make sure that my gain control is reset, okay? Now, again, selecting all for this and using control and adjusting gain, um, you can't reset them all to zero with that method that I know many of us use. So unfortunately, we do have to go through and just double click on each gain control as I'm doing here. If it's not already on zero, that is. And that just resets the gain control. It's a bit tedious, but for most things, it's only going to take a minute at the most. So you just got to make sure you do that so that when we export our audio later we're getting it as raw as we possibly can unfortunately this is a little bit of a complex process unlike using our sponsor distro kid if you release your music through them you just have to upload the audio and your artwork fill in a simple form and distro kid does all the rest including getting out to spotify itunes amazon google play etc etc all of the popular platforms it's not a headache, it's a breeze, and it gets the job done very quickly indeed. Now, in terms of getting this job done, we now need to actually export our audio. So before I actually export, I like to manually select where I think the end of the song is, okay? If you don't manually do this, Cakewalk 
can give you some unexpected results at times. So that's why I like to do this. And I simply do that by going to a point um, here, for example, where I know the song has ended. And then on just one of the tracks, I just drag from that point all the way over to the left, right to the beginning of the project there. And then that sets that area. You can see that's been set at the top there. The next thing I like to do is press Control A on the keyboard to make sure that all of the tracks are selected. Then I go up to the top and click on the export button and then go down to advanced and click there and that opens up this dialog. Now we can actually start off by using a preset here. So I'm going to go to the preset section at the top, click on that and click on tracks. Okay, so that's what we're going to be exporting all of the tracks here. So that get, this gives us a good start in that process. Now there's a few things I want to adjust however, so I'll start off with the file name and location. I don't like to have all this extra garb in there because that will all be used as the track name in the new door and I just want to keep it down to the track name. So you can just go ahead and grab all of that and delete it. And then I would go to this uh, symbol over here, which is the tag symbol, click on that. And then with this pop up, I select track, okay? And then we can close that. So the track name is now going to be used as the file name. And then when we drag that into a new door, um, that file name will be used as the track names. Okay, so it's an easy way of transferring your track names over. The next thing I do is select my export location. So I think that's set fine, but if you need to set that, then just click on this here and you can do that. And then I want to set up my format. So first of all, wave is fine for channel format. I like to select follow source. That means my mono tracks will still remain mono. My stereo will still remain stereo. Okay. Next for sample rate, uh, I like to set that to my current project sample rate, which is 48. So I'll change that to 48,000. And then the bit depth, again, I like to set that same as my project, which is currently 24. So I don't need to change that. And that also means I don't really need to use dithering. So I'll just select none for dithering because I'm not making any changes to uh, bit depth. And then finally, we can leave everything else the same there. Um, because we selected all of our tracks before we open up this dialog, then all of the tracks are selected here. So we don't need to select them. The next thing I want to adjust is uh, this mix and render section. So essentially for me, I like to have everything switched off like so, um, but you can leave the 64-bit engine switched on. And then finally, we want to set the uh, area, the timing, and that's why I dragged that area out early on to manually set it. So if you're going to do that, just make sure you have time selection set here, and the start and the end will be according to your selection, which you made earlier. Then you can just go ahead and click on Export. And it's going to give you confirmation here in terms of which file names it's actually going to create. So that's pretty useful at this point in case you've got anything wrong there. And you can go ahead and click on OK. And at the top, you will see the progress happening there. And it'll probably take quite a while for a lot of big projects. So just wait till that's finished before you do anything else. <laughs> so the next thing I would do is save all of my settings for my plugins. I'm afraid it's a little bit manual, perhaps a little bit tedious. Um, but it's the only way I know how to do this. Um, there's one thing worth pointing out. Um, there is a different file format between VST2 and VST3 versions of plugins. So you need to make sure that you make note of which version you're using for the presets to be able to work. So for example, in this track over here, which is a vo male vocal track, um, let's have a look at this fab filter EQ here. Okay, this isn't the actual EQ setting, by the way. It's just an example. Um, but anyway, this is a VST2 plugin. We can see that at the top here, yeah. And this is where we will click to save our preset. So just click there and then click on Save Preset. Give it a file name and then you can use this in your new door when you load in this plugin. Um, but as I say, um, if we look at the, um, ver the VST3 version, yeah, um, again, go to the same place. It says VST3 this time. Yeah, save preset, just the same as before, but it's actually a different file format, okay? And the two VST versions can't share those files. So as I say, it's important that you make note of which uh, version you're using um, in your project currently. 
Um, you just have to manually go through all of your plugins and save their settings in that way. Unless, of course, you're already using one of the plugins presets, in which case you probably don't need to do this. So that's pretty much it in terms of what you can do from Cakewalk itself. The next phase is getting it into the new door. And unfortunately, I've, of course, I can't show you that because it's different with each door. But I will give you a couple of tips. First of all, I would usually start off by using the MIDI files that we created um, and try and open them as a MIDI file rather than using an import in most cases. That will make sure that you do get the tempo and marker information that gives you a basic structure to your new project in your new door. Then I would drag in your audio. That should be a fairly simple process. And if you've used the methods I've used here, the track names and things should already be set up in most cases with most doors that I've tried this with. The next thing after that would be recreating your mix. That's what the um, screenshots were for, to get a record of fader positions and panning and all of that kind of thing. And then finally, I would insert the plugins and then, you know, set them all up using the presets that we just saved a moment ago. It is not the prettiest process in the world. Um, as you get a bit more fluent with it, um, I usually find it takes maybe about two to three hours most of the time to um, have it set up in the new door in a sort of a meaningful way. Um, but it's the best, best method, I think, that we've got at the moment. Thank you so much for watching today, and I'll see you in the next video.